for Spiritual Living, Los Angeles. I'm Amy Steinberg, and I'm so grateful to be here with you and Reverend Keith Cox this morning. This is our opening song, and it's opening up in sweet surrender. Good morning, Amy Steinberg. Good morning. And welcome and thank you for welcoming us into our virtual space this morning. And um, what a wonderful song to bring us in. I was singing along and feeling the vibrations of just opening up to uh, the nature of sweet surrender that gives us the opportunity when we do so to be present in the presence in a new way. Everything is so colorful and vibrant around you and behind you, Amy. I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. It oh, is and a, a reflection of truly springing forward, which is what we're doing today. So, so happy to have you here, everyone. Let's all welcome um, Amy Steinberg into our virtual space. We are the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, and Amy is joining us today from Asheville, North Carolina. That's where you are today, correct? That's and I right. went to Florida and visiting. And so Amy's been up on the East Coast already doing a service of her own with her own community and is joining us as the musical guest today, bringing her love and her light and her gifts and her talents and her fun and all of that energy that is spirit expressing itself as Amy Steinberg. And so what a joy and pleasure it is to have you here with us today, Amy. I love you. I'm grateful to be here. Glad you're here. So we'll see you in just a moment. Yeah. And so I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Cox. Not so I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Cox. I am Reverend Dr. Keith Cox. And it's my honor and my privilege, my pr 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 privilege and my pleasure to be with you today in this space of energy that is facilitated by technology as expressed by the divine itself so that we can come together today and remember who we are as divine beings. We are a spiritual community that's known as the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles and have been coming together in person, whether that be virtually or face-to-face, eye-to-eye, heart-to-heart, soul-to-soul, 
for a little over 30 years now in the land of Los Angeles. The City of Angels were known to be here. Angels being a representation of the energy of life that is expressive even once it's transformed into a different form. We come together to give each and every one of us the opportunity to not only remember who we are as spiritual beings, but to use the power that we're each imbued with, this creative power of life that we call source, the thing itself, mind, in a way to not only curate a greater life for ourselves individually, but to make an impact on our planet in a way that brings forth an experience in life that is reflective of the innate qualities of the divine that we're each imbued with. We study primarily here the teachings of Dr. Ernest Holmes through the teachings which is known as the science of mind. Within these teachings, the philosophy, faith, and way of life it's known as, is that there's one power, we each individualize that power, we express and experience it through our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions, and our reactions in life itself. And because we live in a universe that's governed by spiritual law, we get to experience our state of awareness and our alignment to this power that we are each innate and imbued with. The qualities of it are peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life and love and wisdom. And so today, as we open up our service today, I would like for us to begin our ritual, which is called Calling in the Light. I'm going to place on the screen the graphics for that. And we can use it as a tool today, as an opportunity to tap into this power that exists within us and accomplish exactly what we're desiring to do, not just for ourselves, but for others. We're all aware that the world that we live in today is in a state of somewhat chaos and confusion and certainly what appears to be great disorder. And so we, as we open up this ritual today called Calling in the Light, I invite each of us to Focus on the flickering flame of the candle on the screen. And that as we perform this ceremony, which is one to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. The purpose of this ritual and this opening to the sweet surrender of life itself is to draw into our gathering a more conscious awareness of our oneness and a remembrance that the light of the divine exists in and as all sentient beings. This light is not bound by physical space. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the teachings of the science of mind, defines light in this way. In flashes of illuminations, the inspired have seen into the very center of reality and have brought back with them a distinct impression of what they've seen and felt. A glimpse of this reality illumines the whole being with a flood of light. The acronym that I like to use for light is Living in God's Healing Truth. And so as we open today to a greater experience of peace on our planet, remembering that peace begins with each one of us, We lean into that through the act of inspiration, meaning allowing spirit to make itself known within us and as us. We do that through illumination. Illumination is defined as inspiration, reaching a cosmic state and a direct contact with the divine. 
as we look into the flickering flames and the sparkles of the sky on the screen. I invite us to bring into our mind's eye anyone in particular that we know that may be suffering and specifically those in the country of Ukraine that are being affected and even those in Russia and wherever and everywhere else in the world. And as we know that our energy that we emanate from us energy of the oneness of life itself connects to all sentient beings. And so we affirm healing in this moment, which is a revealing of love, wisdom, intelligence, source, the first cause, the principle which is dependable in life, the absolute, which is expressing itself by means of you and me right now. Let's also believe that this candle is the healing candle. And so we bring into this light all that we desire to have the experience of the eternal and everlasting love of the divine. I would like to purposefully bring into the light a colleague of mine by the name of Dr. Maureen, Marlene Morris. knowing that healing is taking place by means of her right now. Amy's going to take us into a greater aspect of healing. Remembering that we are one family by singing her song, I Am Holy Light, and inviting each of us to sing along. And so it is. It's very comforting to, first that song was beautiful and quite comforting, Amy, so thank you. But it's very comforting to hear the words and resonate and know that we are one with God. Right? To let go of that old anthropomorphic idea of God being outside of us, sitting in judgment, but to allow the spiritual truth that the divine is an indwelling presence that we're each imbued with, and it's infinite by nature, and as we express it, we too are expressing that infiniteness by nature. And so we have the ability and the capacity to impact not only our own physical world and our own little personal bubble, but the world itself when we choose to align and align um, with this power and use it for good. 
So thank you for um, being a critical part in that in life. So you have a song you're going to sing for us now. What song are you going to sing for us now, Amy? Well, I felt like today was all about surrender. And uh -huh. so this is a song of mine called Letting Go. I love it. I wrote this with Jamie Lula. Surrender is not a white flag. Giving up. Such wisdom. <laughs> you got to let go to hold on. You got to put a little rock in your roll, right? You got to <laughs> let go and tune your soul. I love it. You're so colorful in your background, and I'm so austere, like a museum. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have some color. I got some. I could have painted. You got the rainbow back there in the hearts. I do have rainbow in the hearts. I do. We both have black on, right? So. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you. So thank you, Amy. We'll see you in a bit after this uh, time together of my inspiring message this morning. Can't wait. Yes. So our theme for the month is spring forward, fall back, live in the now. Amy was just singing to us about surrendering and letting go. This morning, I wanted to be very spontaneous with us as we sprung forward on the time of the wheel of time, if you will, and to lean into spontaneity and have a, an experience this morning of playing with the science of mind cards. They're called the science of mind wisdom cards. Here, I'll show you what the front of the box looks like. 
called the Science of Mind Wisdom Cards. And they're cards that have quotes on them from Dr. Ernest Holmes. And I'm going to use that as a stimulus for message this morning. As I'm doing that, if any of you have any questions or comments that you'd like for me to address, feel free to write that in the chat window and I'll use that as well as the wisdom cards. The reason I wanted to do this morning, do this this morning for us is a reminder to us to remember that we have at our disposal always the wisdom of the divine that expresses in, as, and through us. And that we know more oftentimes than we think we know. And that we have the intelligence and the connection to all of the wisdom and the intelligence of life at the disposal to us when we're willing to surrender and open up to that. As I was reading um, one of the insert cards here. It says the wisdom of these cards has empowered millions to change their thinking and change their lives. May these cards motivate you in your journey, creating the life of your dreams. As we think of the millions that have been impacted by these cards and other Ernest Holmes quotes, I want that want us to let that be a foundation, a jumping off point, if you will, this morning, so that each time we hear the words on these cards, we tap into that infinite wisdom of every time that card has been read and used to heal, H-E-A-L, heal someone of um, a state of mind that is misaligned with their innate nature. And then to know that as we're doing that, it is too um, causing a ripple effect on our planet. So without further ado, they are in no order. I've been shuffling them the whole time that Amy was singing that fabulous song. Let's pick a card and see what the first is. Well, the first is <laughs> happiness. And it says, no past mistake can hinder or obstruct the flow of divine intelligence through God's idea, which is perfect man, meaning the human, manifesting the attributes of God in freedom, happiness, activity, and power, and that this truth is now made manifest in their life. What Ernie is telling us here is that we have the capacity, no matter what has transpired in our life, to be happy. Now that might sound to be Pollyanna, and as um, Amy just sang in the song, I'm not being Pollyanna. And it's not a state of Pollyanna-ness, if you will, in choosing to be happy when there is chaos and disruption and maybe sadness and hurt in your world. What this card is reminding us is that we are imbued with joy as a quality of the divine. And that once we open ourselves up, remembering that the acronym for joy is just open yourself, we choose to just open ourselves to the power that is within us that we process and experience and express through our minds, then we have the opportunity and the ability to create a shift in our life. It's through that shift of opening up and being willing to receive that we can choose to then be happy to allow the attribute of joy within us to make itself known that is separate from the conditions. It doesn't mean that the conditions don't exist. It's that we have the ability to process them, engage in them, experience them, and even transcend them when we allow the divine to be our divining rod, really in life, to guide us to that next expression. And so it's not about putting our head in the sand. It's about knowing the power that we have that is in our head, in the sand, in the ocean, in life, in all of life, that is not bound by time and space. And to remember that what is happening as an effect in the world is forever changing. It's an outward expression of what is taking place inside our minds, our hearts, our souls, our beings. And so should we not like what is showing up in the world of effect, we have the opportunity and some would say the responsibility to change our thinking so that we can change our life. The next card that I'm pulled, and I just want to say before I continue with these cards that when Ernest wrote this book and these cards were pulled from that book, um, it was 
he oft always referenced man as the human. So he's not being gender biased in the modern day world. So when we say man, we're speaking of the human. This card is man is evolved. Man, the human is evolved from the universe as a self-conscious thinking center of living spirit. I think that in these times of um, disruption in the world, and where it appears that things are dissolving before us, never to be the same in a good way again. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm just speaking of conversations I've had with many of you and the overarching feeling that's going on right now. It's important to remember that we do have within us a self-conscious thinking center of living spirits because we're evolved from the universe that that's its nature. And to remember from where we've come. Now I mean that both in a metaphysical sense of where we have evolved as a species on our planet and let that be a guide for us that evolution is our nature. Evolution meaning we have that within us that is as an energy force that is always moving into a higher framework of consciousness but we also have the capacity individually to be a conscious evolutionist, meaning we have the capacity to change our whole ideology around life and then be a conscious participant in how life is showing up for us because life is showing up for us as it's showing up through us. And so it's from there that we can then take a breath, take a deep breath, and exhale and remember, not just exhale, but exhale, get rid of the hail, the state of mind, to remember from where we've come and the capacity of where we have to go. In our meditation last week, I read to us again the statistics from mathematical ancestry of, and I don't have that at, at my disposal, but it's basically for us to be here in this moment, we had to have two parents, which meant then four grandparents, which meant then eight great grandparents and 16 great great grandparents. And the list goes on and on. And it so showed that for us to be here physiologically over the course of the last 400 years, it was like a thousand plus ancestors that we personally derived from, each of us individually. I think it's important for us to remember that at times because many have walked this planet prior to us in horrific and challenging and blessful and peaceful and joyful times. We are a part of that. And so we get to be a part of that today in this very moment and exhale anything that's contrary to our divine nature. And once again, to remember that's not being Pollyanna, it's being in tune and astute and aware of our awareness in life and the power that is with us and the way that the law of life works. Let's pull another card. What do you think? Next card is how to live. I think it's important for us to remember that this is not an accomplishment in life that is static. That when we want to approach how to live, it's an ever-evolving, um, ecstatic way of life. Holmes tells us on the card, to learn how to think is to learn how to live. Well, we all know that we're thinking. We've addressed this a lot in our class this week using Dr. Walker's um, quote of, I am thinking, what am I thinking, and am I willing to have the experience of that which I'm thinking? It's important for us to remember that at all times we are thinking. So the framework of the card is not to say we need to learn to think, it's to learn how to think. Well, how are we to think? Obviously we know the quote, change your thinking, change your life, but it's important to remember the way to think, how to think, is to remember that we have the ability to choose what we're thinking. And to remember, as Gary Zukov tells us, choice is the engine of evolution. To choose consciously, he says, choice is the engine of evolution. To choose consciously is far better to choose unconsciously. 
Now, he says conscious is better than unconscious. Been there, done that. And he goes on to tell us that choice is the second greatest gift we've ever been given, second to the gift of life itself. And so if you and I want to tap into our evolution, our conscious evolution, the key to that is to tune into what we are choosing to think, what we're choosing to believe, what we're choosing to know, and what we're choosing to be willing to surrender to as well. Really critical components of being awakened on our journey of spiritual awakening, finding our personal self-empowerment, our vision statement. Let's pull another card. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I am. The next card, Deeper Union. Well, this really is the key to finding our personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. It really is the key to being a conscious evolutionist. It really is the key to being a practitioner of the teachings of the science of mind. He says we should daily feel a deeper union with life, uppercase L, meaning the divine. A greater sense of that indwelling God, the God of the seen and of the unseen within us. I know personally for myself, which would be personally, obviously, for myself, that as I have navigated life in the last few years of life with the conditions of the pandemic and the financial crisis in the last few weeks and then this war on our planet and isolation and dealing with with personal stuff and others dealing with their own stuff and being the conduit for that in life and being the minister, what I've really, really committed to is every day looking at life as a spiritual experiment. And what I mean by that is constantly and continuously asking myself, what do I believe of the power of the divine? What do I believe in regards to this indwelling God? What do I believe in regards to that which is seen and the unseen? What do I believe that is possible in life? And there are times in life when that's a really, really easy and natural journey to be on. And there are times that it isn't. And the times that it isn't, I've learned to be present in those times, as well as to lean into that which I know innately and to lean into reaching out to others that can know that for me. And so I invite each of you to do that as well in your life, that the journey of life is about feeling, it's not saying creating, it's saying feeling the deeper union that already exists. That's the thing, one of the things I think is so important for us to remember in this philosophy, faith, and way of life is known as the science of mind, is that we don't have to create that union. We also don't have to be approved of to be able to use that union effectively and productively. We also don't have to um, honor it as a resurrective power for it to be present in our lives. All that we have to do to experience more of it is to open up and surrender to that which already is. Now that is a very heady and intellectual statement and one that might seem a bit far-fetched and far off. And yet the mere act of opening and surrendering allows us the space mentally and emotionally for it to make itself known in a new way. Dr. Walker used to always say it's using a Bible quote, it's laying in smiling repose. And that, has re that registers with me in such a way because I'm able to get a visual for that. Amy and I were talking earlier this morning about being visual learners. But I, when I think of that, I think of this goddess within me laying in smiling repose saying, come on, baby, use me. Come on, I'm here for you. Come on, come on. And then to know that not only is she laying in smiling repose, looking glamorous, inviting me in, but that very energy that is within her doing that is the same energy of the cosmos, of the dust, of the creation of life itself. Now that works for me and I don't do that believing that the power has 
gender. I do that as a visual so that I can play with the energy field in my mind of feeling that deeper union. And I affirm for each of us today that we find a way that we can do that for ourselves as well. Let's take a deep breath and exhale. I love the new attention to exhale, getting rid of the hellish thoughts and beliefs when we breathe out. New card. Discovery. Ernest writes, the first great discovery the human made was that we could think. This was the day when they first said, I am. This marked their first day of personal attainment. Many of you have heard what I'm about to say right now, and and it's I'm just gonna say it, is that you know we're part of a new thought philosophy. And what's incumbent in that is us having a new thought often. I say that as your minister and guide and um, messenger today, while knowing that for myself as well, sometimes that's very difficult to do. And yet what we are called to do is to have a new thought. And so what comes up for me in this moment is for me to remember, and I know for us to remember, is that doesn't have to be a new thought that is like a lightning bolt from the sky. Sometimes that new thought is, I am. It's, I am the power and the presence of God right now. And I know that as I say that, and I'm choosing to believe that each of you are saying it with me, that a difference is being made in life itself. Now, the reason that's a new thought, even though it may have components of what we've heard or said before, is that we're meeting it with the consciousness that we are in this moment. Remember, the theme for today is spring forward, fall back, live in the now. And so the new thought that we have has to be new every time we have one, because all we have is the moment. So I hope that gives each of us today a new perspective on how we can lean into the simplicity of our teaching without it having to be grandiose and understanding that each new thought that we have that is aligned and reflective of our divine nature of peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life and love and wisdom then builds up for us a spiritual musculature in faith of that which is new, which is reflective of our divine nature and then makes a difference in our lives and others because of what it is and what we are expressing it. I'm continually shuffling while I'm talking, which is probably a metaphor for life in many ways. All right, let's see. You're all so quiet out there in the land of CSL, LA Virtual Reality, and Facebook Live. No one reaching out and presenting a question. All right, next, let's take the one off the top. It says, the spirit is alive. Ah, how true is that? The definition is there is no stagnation in spirit, nor should there be in any idea, in our, nor should there be any in our idea of spirituality. To be spiritual is to create. The spirit is alive, conscious, aware, and active. As you and I are each on our journey of spiritual awakening, it's important to remember, as Ernest tells us here, to be spiritual is to create. The question then that we get to ask ourselves is, are we conscious of what we're creating? Because we're creating at all times, meaning we're as spiritual as we can ever be at all times. But we get to experience our spiritual nature more and more and more as we choose to become aware of that which we're thinking and creating and tuning into. Remember, all is energy. And so it's important for us to remember what frequency we're both emitting and tuning into on this journey of life. What are we drawing into our world based on our frequency? And then what are we expressing and emanating and giving out in our world? 
shuffle, 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 now. Seems to be a theme today. Go deeply within is the next card. I want us to all take a deep breath as we hear this definition. Let's breathe in together. Exhale. We're told here, there's no obstruction. One cannot dissipate by the power of truth. So we learn to go deeply within ourselves and speak as though there were a presence there that knows. It is most worthwhile to commune with spirit to sense it and feel it. So often you hear me say, take a deep breath and go inside. I love that because it gives us the opportunity to center and anchor ourselves. It also reminds me of a chant that Michael Beckwith did that's um, aligned with hip hop dance music. And it's take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath and feel the presence the breath of life itself gives us an awareness that the presence of life is within us. Holmes is telling us here that it's so worthwhile to commune with spirit, to go deeply within. And the reason we want to go deeply within in our physiology, once again, it's a reminder, it's a um, metaphor, if you will, for the opportunity that we have to go deep within our mind, our soul, the presence, and open up. I've given a couple of ways today of how that works for me, but another way that I like to look at it and will oftentimes do in our meditations on Wednesday morning, and I invite you all to join in on that or watch them on our YouTube, is that as we take ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper into our psyche, i.e., I believe that's into our soul to the best of our ability, we then get to be in the womb of creation, if you will, metaphorically. It's all just a visual, but it takes us into that womb where we can feel, sense it and feel it, as Ernest says, the darkness of creation, but also knowing that it's in that darkness that we get to see in a new perspective the light itself. That sparkle, that twinkle of the light that is always there within us, waiting to be acknowledged. And as we acknowledge it, we're living in God's healing truth. Remember the acronym for light in that moment. And that then gives us the opportunity to create a new perspective, to have a new thought, and then to act upon that. Act upon it physically. Act upon it faithfully. Act upon it with wisdom and and our inner guidance. That's the light itself. It's there. Okay, we're going to do it a different way. I'm just going to spread them out and pull one. See, the theme continues. See thy God. Behold the wonders of the great whole and the marvels of the universe. Look out and see thy good. It's not far off. It is not a far off, but is at hand. How appropriate that this card pops up after the last one, because it tells us, yes, it's really important in the previous card to go deep within. But we're also being told, but then behold before us the wonders of the great whole. To know that life is within our soul and within the depths of our awareness and our being and because we live in a physical universe, to marvel at this physical universe, which is all an outer expression of the same power that we see in the darkness, the womb of creation and the light, because remember, there's only one power. Often in counseling sessions, I will say to a client, look beyond and ask yourself, what do you see? And so oftentimes that answer will be a very one-dimensional answer. And I'll invite them to then look beyond that. I use the example oftentimes when I'm looking out in my, this seat, looking out the window, I see the glass and then I see the trees behind it. But if I look even further, I can see the leaves on the trees and I can see the twinkling fountain that is there 
and I can see the wind chimes that are there and I can see the house that is on the other side of that and I see the glass in the windows of the house and I can see the people moving around in the house and I can see the dogs that are in the house even though I don't physically see them but I know those dogs so I know they're there and I can also turn my hand to the left a little bit and see the wood on the deck of the wood on the deck and I can see the leaves on the trees there and I can see the sun. And if I turn in this direction, I can see another computer screen and see the window and see a feather on a walking stick, all which is energy that is infused with the great I am. All is this oneness of life. That's the marvel of the universe. And that's just what I can see with my physical eyes. It's important for us to understand that that is important for us to use as a baseline for not only looking at the marvels of the universe and the wonders of the universe, but to then keep that balance and void, if you will, with our inner vision. Letting our inner vision guide that external vision, then we will have an external vision that sees that which is reflective of our inner vision. It's that journey of living in our humanity and our divinity and letting our divinity guide our humanity. And as our humanity is a reflection of our divinity, we lean back into our divinity with a greater sense of trust of letting it guide us as we navigate our humanity. This card I just picked up, which is called creation. And we're asked, how are we going to reconcile suffering and lack with the goodness of God? The difficulty is solved when we realize that all creation is an effect. Well, this, of course, rings true for all of us right now. When we know that there is suffering, when we know that there is lack, when we know that there is harm taking place on our planet. And I was thinking about that a lot this week. And that is true. And there's been great light brought to that. And certainly it appears on some level we may be on the brink of something significant, if you will, in our world today. But the spiritual truth, the human truth is, there's always been suffering and lack on our planet. It's not to disregard it. The question is, what are we going to do about it through the lens of our individualized expression of our divinity. What are we gonna do about it? How are we gonna show up? How are we going to be the power and the presence of the divine? I don't have the answer for you for that. But what I know to be true is that the foundational principles of this philosophy and faith and way of life are true. They're true for me, for sure, and I believe they're true for you. And the very tenets of them are, there's one, one power, one life, one love. That I individualize that power, as does each and every one of you. And the first step in making a difference in life is to speak and to know the truth. The second is to use our power for good. That is both through the affirmation of truth and oneness in life, through spiritual mind treatment, through meditation, through visualization, through imagination. And then as we were taught many years ago in our teaching of it's important to treat and then move your feet, to then do what you're called to do, to make a difference on this planet with your economic resources, with your physical resources, and with your ability to reach out and make a difference. But what I invite you to do today is to open yourself up to be guided to what that answer is. I believe there's one more card that's calling out to us. Let's see what it is. A sea of perfect life. We live in a sea of perfect life and we should take time to understand and sense this in our imagination. What we're being told here is that in addition to making a difference on our planet and in our life, 
it's important to remember that one of the very basic tenets of this teaching is that we live in a sea of perfection, of wholeness, a sea of perfect life. And daily as we commune with this power, that's presence that is within us, to take time to understand and sense this spiritual truth in our imagination, to see wholeness, to see perfection, to see creation, to see peace, power, beauty, joy, light, life, love, and wisdom, making itself known as each one of us and all of humanity. I hope you've enjoyed this time we've shared together. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing in this realm, knowing that it's making a difference not only for me, but for all of us. And today has provided insight and inspiration and an awakening for us as we spring forward, fall back, and live in the now, this day, March 13th, in the calendar year of the Gregorian calendar, 2022. And so it is. I'm going to invite Amy back to take us on a journey of song, which I believe is an inspirational, spontaneous song. Yeah, I think I'm just going to kind of let spirit move me. Um, I listened to everything you said, and I am just going to kind of start from the, the last card and move sort of forward through what I gleaned. I mean, I, I, I didn't write anything, I didn't write much down. I only wrote a few things down, but I just kind of want to let spirit and the teachings kind of guide this. There is one power and 
So beautiful to bear witness to that creativity of the divine within you. And I know you that you are not that you're not really creating that on the spot. You're surrendering to it. You know, it's like when I start to try to create it, it uh -huh. goes. It, it's like if I relax. Yeah, that's when it's the best. Yeah. I get it. It's that's really the um, that's a, what a fine, fine example of um, exactly what the cards guided us through today. Right. It's so fun. Yeah, so much fun. So much fun. So much fun to have you here, Amy. Thank you so very, very much for tuning in. Um, and I don't mean tuning in by coming onto Zoom. I mean by tuning in your being to um, this service. It's um, fabulous and just spectacular. You're, and so, I always learn something. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So a big thank you to Amy for being here. Everyone's reaching out to you in the chat window telling you how much they love you. And a big thank you to all of you for being here today. Know that you're celebrated and welcomed and honored and appreciated just as you are. A thank you to Travis Smith, our audio technician, and Robert Hensley, our social media support and administrative assistant for guiding us in the ways that they do to help make this possible for all of you. I'm going to invite you to go to our website. If you'd like to support our community financially, you can do that on our website csl-la.org and that'll guide you through the methods to do that whether that's to mail on a check our address is there or whether you'd like to use paypal or through the donate tab or our app in the app store which is a great resource for the tools that i speak of know that all that you contribute is deeply honored and celebrated and welcomed um, as a reflection of the oneness and the abundance of the universe that we're all part of and it speaks to your support of your life and your ministry one of the ministry of CSL LA. I want to remind you that the there's the daily text that goes out each day. It goes out at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. That's a quick 320 character affirmation of life to remind us of who we are on a daily basis. To watch out for announcements for Easter Sunday. There's hopefully something special taking place that day, and that's what we're planning on. That each Wednesday there's a meditation that takes place at 8:30 a.m. It's a guided meditation for about 20 minutes. It's really a wonderful anchoring tool to not only remember who we are, but to give us tools to navigate the day and the week ahead. We have our last class this week at Wednesday night at 6:30 p.m that is from the book E Squared. It's been a great fun experiment. We started out as a five week, we moved it to six week. Um, playful interaction with the book E Squared, which are experiments to prove that our thoughts have power in life. And it's been really fun playing with that as well as I've written some um, 
separate curriculum to go with that for all of us. And so if you'd like to pop in for the last class, please do so. Also watch out for the next set of classes that will take place. We have a community outing next Sunday. Um, March 20th at the Academy of Motion Picture Museum. We're all going to gather there 1230 for a one o'clock um, walkthrough. You're open to uh, all join us and get your own tickets. We have found out that this Sunday is, this upcoming Sunday is Marathon Sunday, LA County Marathon. So you will need to look at the um, map of the marathon and plan accordingly for your automobile route or how you're going to get there. If you need any assistance or guidance in that, please feel, to re feel free to reach out to me throughout the week and I will um, be happy to help you however I can in that moment. We have an email that goes out on Wednesday, I mean on Monday. Usually watch for that. That's got all kinds of announcements and information in it. Excuse me, as well. We're going to close out today a little bit different. Amy's going to guide us through singing our song, Love is My Decision. I'd like for us to close using that today and have us all sing along um, just to anchor into love as a quality of the, desire, of the desire and to remind us each that we have the capacity and the ability to make a decision in life. Every time life is showing up, we have the ability to make a decision. So before Amy begins, I'm going to share with all of you on Facebook that are joining us that post that song. We'll say goodbye to you and know that you have a fabulous week. If you're here on Zoom, uh, feel free to stay on and keep your cameras on and we can say a quick hello and quick conversation. I just want to affirm for each and every one of us that the power and the presence of the divine is making itself known by each one of us right here, right now, in completeness, as perfection and wholeness. That already innately within us is the ability to be a conscious evolutionist, to think from a higher framework, to live from a higher vibration, to be the power and the presence in a new way by having a new thought in this new day, in this moment right now. We let it be. We affirm it's true. And we say together, and so it is. Please feel free to sing along with Amy. She'll guide you with the lyrics, and then we'll gather afterwards. Amy. Love is my decision. It's up to me to give of my heart. Love is my decision. It's up to me. start. No one else can tell me to start. And once I decide to change my mind, and once I decide to change my mind, Source will show me how. Source will show me how. Love is my decision. probably know it. Love is my decision. It's up to me to give up my heart. Love is my decision. And no one else can tell me to start. And once I Yes, it is. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Know that you are loved.